So we started by giving control of the distribution and the, the base images, and then we just want to continue that by saying, only you as the application developer really know exactly what your application needs. The kernel tries its very best to figure out what scheduling you need, what storage uh, striping you need, but ultimately, if you're building um, a small single-purpose website versus a Facebook-scale photo storage solution, your application embeds in itself the knowledge of the scaling that it needs. So Unicurl just expose all this functionality to the application and let the developer community innovate as, uh, as um, normally happens with, uh, with these things. And the whole movement, of almost every one of the Unicurls is open source under a liberal license. So these libraries can just be reused uh, and linked to this uh, as normal. But when they're not appropriate, continue to use Linux and Windows, and they will all be around for a long time. There's plenty of room for everyone. So, I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of what this looks like. Uh, so there are two demonstrations. And this one is going to show us how to build a Unicron microservice using Docker. Um, and we're also going to build a little web application, a, a nibble blog based uh, PHP application, um, all from Unicron. And the important points here, just before I dive into the terminal, is that um, everything is wrapped in a nice, easy to use Docker file. So Docker obviously comprehensively fixes the build problem for most applications. With Unikernels, it's a gigantic build problem because we're also trying to link in all these kernel libraries. It's all hidden away behind Docker files, so that um, it means that once someone has taken the pain of figuring out how to rack this particular Unikernel in, in a build, we can just we can base our applications from that and continue using the tool chain, which has made life dramatically easier for us. And we turn each microservice into a Unikernel, so we build a cluster of Unikernels, and each of them runs in a key energy machine with full hardware protection. So let me figure out how to get into this. So, um, I will just reset my demo. Alright. Slide the stands here. That's the one story. So, um, what I have here is a, um, uh, just to make it easier, I have a little uh, demo script. So I'm just going to run a set of bash aliases, but we'll see what's going on. So the first thing we're going to do is, I'm just going to build the, um, the, the demonstration, which is a series of Docker files. Now, I'm not going to um, show you that, I just want to show you the fact that it's just a normal Docker build if you're familiar with, uh, with, these, with these things. And what we do now is just check. We've just built Nginx, uh, MySQL, and PHP. Um, I'm just going to run a command in the container um, to just do a d minus h of the unikernel. So the unikernel is wrapped into a file system and it's running inside there. So it's 2.1 megabytes. Now this um, is actually a complete unikernel that uh, can boot and, and run all by itself. So let's take a look at what this looks like. Um, we're going to first of all run the database because it tends to be the first uh, dependency. And so I've got a modified uh, Docker command line that uh, just has the additional logic to run Unikernel. We haven't upstreamed our patches yet, I'll talk about it later on. And so we drop Unikernel run, give it a host name, give it a name, and in a few seconds, uh, we have a normal MySQL uh, database running. So if I do a Docker PS at this point, um, we have MySQL running as a normal container, except it's running as a Unikernel. So, how does this differ from, how does, oh, let me just remember the, uh, oh, sorry, it's MySQL show logs. So if we just look at the, the boot log for this, we can start to see what happened. So normally when you boot MySQL, um, it just runs a Linux binary and uh, it just boots a normal uh, uh, process. If you look at the logs for this particular one, it actually started booting an entire binary. So this should be, this is actually the NetBSD uh, kernel that uses the wrong kernel project. So this is started booting up the device drivers. Um, it attached all of the entry required to the Docker API. It initialized the virtual I.O. And then finally, Whenever uh, it finishes booting, instead of booting a normal multi-user operating system, it jumps straight into the MySQL logic. So the only thing that this unit kernel does is have the capacity to run MySQL. And at this point, you start seeing familiar uh, uh, MySQL kind of warnings and errors and so on, and it's, it's, and it's, it's actually listening on the port. So when this is done, um, we can actually just connect to the database, just like any other Docker service, by uh, using the MySQL, <coughs> MySQL connect username row. And I can, for example, use MySQL, uh, show database, show tables, you know, do, do whatever uh, you can normally do in MySQL. So this unit kernel, um, just a few megabytes in size, is just running through the normal, the normal Docker tooling. So we can continue this by, by launching our cluster of unit kernels. So we can run, for example, PHP, and each of these unit kernels is separately compiled. So um, we saw that Nginx is just two megabytes in size. The PHP one can also be compiled even without TCP IP, because it's listening over a domain socket for connection to the local host. So each of these can be optimized depending on exactly what features are used. So in PHP, um, if you're using, for example, um, uh, an image processing library, it will pull in all the logic required for that, the floating point and the mads and so on, um, and all of the libraries there, but it will not pull in the TCP IP unless you're using a network service. Uh, and, and for 